The Platinum Top 50 Austin has been around for 12 years now. It's been a great organization. Today's guest is Amber Thomas, the CEO of Platinum Top 50. And we're gonna go over how this organization became so impactful and what you can do to be a Platinum Top 50 member. Check it out. All right, Amber. So how are you today? Really good. Thanks, Ryan, for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So we have known each other for 12 years. Better part, yeah. Yeah. How long have you been doing uh, Platinum Top 50? So Platinum Top 50, I bought it in January of 2008, okay. which for anyone in real estate, 2008 was not the year to jump in right. uh, and buy a business, but uh, bought it in January of 2008. And two years later, brought it to Austin at the time. It was my way of escaping San Antonio and getting back to the cool life and friends that I had in Austin. Uh, and this was going to be my pathway to do that. So started Platinum Top 50, uh, but then there started a family and fell in love with San Antonio as my home base. Yeah. I have always enjoyed having the ability to come up to Austin, meet people like you, work here, be yeah. a part of the culture. Uh, and what I feel like is the best of both worlds. Absolutely. So what, what, when, what was it before you bought it and how long was it around before? Yeah. So I'm the third owner, mm -hmm. um, you know, previously it was just in San Antonio and primarily a recognition program for real estate agents. Mm. Um, there wasn't that much in terms of education events. There wasn't the emphasis that we put on making meaningful connections in real estate agent to agent, agent to partner. It was really more about just administering an annual award every year. Yeah. Uh, but when I came into it, I was an affiliate partner. My dad's been a home inspector in San Antonio for over 37 years. And so I was a small business partner. And so when I stepped in, I knew from my limited experience kind of working with him, what kinds of opportunities partners were seeking when it comes to getting in front of real estate agents? Yeah. You know, you've got to sign on your door. Vendors, we don't take in-person meeting. Like, yeah. it's hard to forge those relationships, and rightfully so, people are busy, yeah. but it's essential. Yeah. And so kind of finding the way to do that in a valuable way for all parties uh, was something that I really was able to kind of tap into early on. Yeah, yeah. And I have two signs on the door. And yeah. the reason I have that is because a lot of times I'm the only one here. And they'll knock on the door. They come in. I'm like in the middle of all kinds of stuff. I'm like, I just can't do this. You right. know, um, what did you do before this? Well, I was a college student. Okay. So I uh, graduated from Texas. And like I said, my dad had a real estate inspection business. And I saw that marketing had just completely gone to the wayside. You know, being a small business owner, you wear a lot of hats. Yeah. And so felt like I could come down and really make a difference in, in his business. And that's how I got introduced to Platinum Top 50. Uh -huh. So it was... Uh, an organization that was looking to bring in an inspector as one of their preferred partners. Mm -hmm. And so had the introduction with the previous owner, had a great experience, like started to really gain traction, even things as simple. And this like dates me because when I took over Platinum Top 50, we weren't even on Dropbox. We were on Facebook. I mean, I was getting photos on CD-ROMs, but I would take invitations, for example, and walk down the halls of Keller Williams offices, yeah. right? Coldwell Banker offices and introduce myself to these agents and just use that little invitation at the time as like an entryway connection point. Yeah. So I started to really make great relationships. Uh, we started to get business from it. I befriended the previous owner uh, and that led to, you know, her really presenting me one day at Starbucks yeah. uh, when I was 24 years old. I'd really like for you to consider buying this business. Yeah. Uh, and here we are now almost 15 years later. So what makes this award show, and I, I like, you know, again, I, I know, I know a lot of the answers, but you know, I, I was, I was the very first, joined the very first one in yep. 2010, right? Yep. And then uh, Platinum Top 50 for nine years. Um, and it's been, made a big impact on my life, uh, and my career, but what, what's your answer for what makes your awards different than the, the rest of them out there? Sure. Well, it's kind of twofold to that. Um, the award program itself is half of what we do, right? But mm -hmm. I feel like the other half of what we do is so important too, not just for the agents of Platinum Top 50, but for the agents at large. And what we do uh, is make meaningful connections in real estate. Mm -hmm. You have shared with me before, yeah. right? That building relationships with other top agents yeah. has been impactful in your business. You, you told me one time, it was a multiple offer deal, 
I didn't know any of the other agents. One of them had platinum top 50 listed in their signature. And that was a legitimate consideration that we took to the yeah. sellers, right? Because yeah. you knew that you could kind of trust and vet the quality of professional yeah. that you were getting on the other side of that, yeah. right? So so it's building agent to agent relationships, building agent to partner relationships yeah. with high quality business owners, whether it's a corporate partner in a title company, a lender builder, or it's a small business partner. That's a home stager, a decorator, mm -hmm. a mover. Mm -hmm. um, those are valuable for your career to be, to have that Rolodex, if you will, yeah. of, of high quality partners. And so, you know, for me, the ability to bring together agents and partners in a fun, meaningful, impactful way, whether it's through education or just networking, building yeah. relationships, has a lot of value. Uh, so I think that sets us apart from other organizations mm -hmm. that just kind of emphasize that recognition part, the yeah. award ceremony every yeah. year, and that's kind of limited to what they do. Yeah. We do both. So so that's kind of the, the core of, of what we do. And then as far as the actual award recognition program, as you know, for us, you know, 60% of it is sales, 25% uh, is community leadership and service. And the remainder of that balance, uh, right, 15%, I think, yeah. is, is industry leadership. Yeah. And so this idea that Platinum Top 50 fundamentally, because of our criteria, really seeks to recognize that well-rounded agent, mm -hmm. someone who is clearly successful in sales and also mm -hmm. a leader in the community, a leader in the industry, you know, with your work on board of directors, right? This yeah. is time that you put in yeah. that we as an organization, that Platinum Top 50 values and wants to continue to encourage and promote that uh, with kind of agents at large. Yeah, I'll go a little bit further because um, for me, one of the biggest uh, impacts of of the community um, is been, you know, you guys have so many social events, right? And before I got really involved, you know, I, I did the ABJ uh, Top 50, uh, you know, a few times, made it in a couple times, I think. Um, and then, um, you know, that's a once a year deal, right? Well, before that, many, many times, you know, so many agents strictly through email and phone. And, um, you know, through the networking events, you get to know people on a personal level, right? And you that that is so impactful for for your clients, right? It's not only it only enriches you because you get to share experiences with with other top producing agents. But like, you know, if I if I am in a negotiation with someone that I know on a personal level, that I know there's not we're not coming in with this friction, you know, or or, or the ego isn't quite as there because you know them on a personal level. It's been immensely helpful and i think that, that that was one of the surprising things for me not too surprising yeah. but 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 just how smooth a deal would go yeah. when i'm doing a deal with someone that i've been friends with from networking events absolutely even yeah. if you've just shared a meal with them at one yeah. of our lunches right and it didn't even have to be at that friend level just that familiarity goes a long way yeah like we always say relationships and real estate matter mm -hmm. and they do matter and that's something that, you know, this year it's getting back to the basics, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we've all, we've all heard that. And time and time again, what that means for people is that re-emphasis on relationships, right? Yeah. Whether it's sourcing off-market deals, whether it's working through a hard contract, whether it's a referral that you need uh, for a really picky or challenging client, relationships in this business matter. Yeah. And so that's something that, you know, at Platinum Top 50, we take a lot of pride and work really hard in creating space for relationships to flourish. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I kind of used the word networking earlier and, you know, got, you know, kind of cheeky with it. That's a word for me that's overplayed. Like, yeah. it's an event and we want people to have fun. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we threw neon parties where yeah. we had fire dancers white parties. and we had white parties. Yeah. And, you know, and so it's like we want people to have fun. We also want people to leave feeling like that was a good use of my time. And so, I love when we do agent panels, kind of that peer to peer. Yeah. And that's one of the things that really um, surprised me several years ago was agents willingness to speak on a panel, share their experiences. I just always thought that, you know, y'all are essentially competitors with one another. Yeah. So wouldn't you want to keep that to yourself? But that's time and time again, that's not what I find, right? Agents are willing and wanting to mentor, to share, to talk about best practices for communication, 
talk about marketing and, yeah. uh, and, and it's not a secret that you're trying to keep. So, you know, I just really find that to be refreshing and that's something that, that we've tapped into in the last couple of years too. Awesome. Um, okay. So what is, so I know that over the last few years, well, obviously there's a couple of things that happened. The, uh, the event and the, um, what you do in the platinum 50 has, has gotten a lot more popular, right? At the same time, volume of agents has gotten a lot larger because of, you know, they're doing more deals. The values here are going uh, through the roof. They've been going through the roof. Um, how has the average volume per agent changed from say five years ago to now? Yeah. Well, I don't have the the numbers on it. I could yeah. get you right every yeah. year. We're um, I always feel like transparency with awards, especially yeah. these, is very important. And so every year we try to make like incremental steps to increasing the transparency. And so you know we always put out there what the average sales production was for winners. Um, we give reports now to the finalists where they can see where they fared in those categories of sales, service, uh, and industry. You know compared to the average winner. So I don't have the number, but obviously it's increased tenfold. Yeah. I will say this, like Platinum Top 50 has no minimums, mm -hmm. right? Because every year, I mean, the market goes up and down. So there's no minimum to apply because yeah. that fluctuates from year to year. Sure. Um, the other thing I'll, you know, point to is, you know, Platinum Top 50, um, the way that we look at sales and it goes into our like big, you know, software program is 30% units and 30% volume. Mm -hmm. So in theory, if you had an agent that sold one home at a million or 10 homes at a hundred thousand, yeah. the agent that sells 10 homes fares better in our program because they would have 10 kind of points in that unit side, yeah. right? But they'd still be at that same million dollars. So, you know, it's kind of a misconception, I think sometimes for agents to think, uh, that this is about luxury sales. No. Um, it's actually harder, much harder yeah. for luxury agents. Uh, to kind of qualify for that winner because typically they have fewer unit sides. So uh, Platinum Top 50 is is one that, you know, looks at and considers into our kind of criteria, units and overall volume. And I think that that is so refreshing and fair because let me tell you, the agent that does, you know, 20 homes and at, at you know, 500 and the agent that does you know, five homes at, you know, a million, uh, are, um, like the, the, the agent that does more, um, transactions is working their ass off. Right. right? And, and, and they're doing a good job, you know, to be able, able to, to be able to do that. And, and, um, it, it gives a, a fair advantage to people that are not just luxury. I mean, sure. look, you want to be there. There's plenty of luxury awards out there. Right. Uh, and then there's also people like, like in, in my career, when I was selling real estate, I was selling, you know, $500,000 homes and $2 million homes. So, you know, um, well, I will say so two things, you know, um, that's also why I created luxury week, mm -hmm. right? So another, you yeah. know, agent, agent resource, uh, that's completely kind of a separate business, um, you know, criteria wise, completely different from platinum top 50 but a, a similar program that is for agents, but the qualification is just based on luxury sales, yeah. right? Because PT 50 is a little bit harder uh, for luxury agents to, to qualify for. So look, it is hard to be in a recognition quote unquote business. Um, we, I love that there isn't really subjectivity, right? It's based on points that are yeah. earned on dollars that you contribute on hours that you serve yeah. on sales that you close. Like that's how our program is. Uh, and not, no one is better or different from the other. I think people are always trying to kind of, you know, pit us against, if you will, you know, ABJ or other ones. And uh, they're all hard to do and we all do them differently. And yeah. I have had to look people in the eye sometimes who are upset that maybe or confused. And but so and so in my office, I sold more than them. Yeah. You know, why did they win? And I didn't. That happens, you know, every year. Uh, and sometimes this just isn't the right award program for you. And we're okay with that. It's impossible to, to be everything to everyone. Yeah. Of um, course. so, you know, that's just something that I've had to get comfortable with over the last couple of years, uh, and knowing that it, it'll be impossible to, to be that, you know, um, but again, the transparency part for us, we'll say, well, yes, you did have higher sales production considerably. However, you had four points in community yeah. and the average was 23. Yeah. Or you so, didn't, or you didn't have as many units. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, and so we have those kind of conversations yeah. often. That's awesome. 
so uh, and you answered this a little bit, but um, what have you seen in the real estate community in both you know Austin and in San Antonio as a result of uh, the events you've had? Yeah, I mean, togetherness, relationship yeah. building. Um, you know, for me, it, it San Antonio because Platinum Top Fifty was started in San Antonio and had some years ahead of Austin, so to speak. It always felt like it was a uh, a, a very tight knit industry compared to when I would come up to Austin. Austin seemed a lot more disconnected. Yeah. Um. In in the beginning, and I think that again, to your point, ten years uh, for us to come in and have impact, which is one of our core values, yeah. have impact and bring people together year after year. Yeah. Right. Has really allowed for relationships. Yeah. And and I think that. You know, yes, there's there's advantages to having relationships in your business. It helps get deals done. Um, when I need someone in the eleventh hour, I've got someone that can help me close this, right? An inspector who can come out at you know six o'clock at night, right? Yes, that matters. But there's also just the joy. We spend so much of our of our time. We give of ourselves mm-hmm. to our businesses. Yeah. Um, and in a business that is made up of a ton of individuals, yeah, right? We're all individuals. I'm individual. You are, right? That this is something, though, that has brought together to where now we have fun friendships and actual mm-hmm. relationships. I think that there's that kind of, uh, you know, added value to it outside of a direct impact on a deal or a client. Well, and also information. I was at yeah. the one you had uh, last week, the week before, and like that was great information, you know, with the, the airport and the... Uh, you know, the water levels and all that. Like, I mean, I, I don't know if I were to be able to like, get all that in, in from somewhere else. Um, what do you think are the common characteristics of top producing agents? Hmm. Um, I think they're always learning, right? I think uh, that they see the value in staying current with, like you said, not just industry things, but what's going on in the community, what's happening in the schools. Mm -hmm. They want to stay current with the bonds that are being passed, with city council things. And that's just a, an innate thing of wanting to learn, right? A quest for always kind of knowledge. And then, and then I think there's also the learning aspect of uh, top agents also view and understand that they're not just here to help people buy and sell real estate. They're running a business. Yeah. And that takes a whole different skill set. Uh, as you and I know, right? To yeah. to view your real estate career as a business and run it with the discipline it takes mm-hmm. um, across finance, marketing, leadership, right? So I think top agents run their business like a business. Yeah. Eventually grow into that, right? We all yeah. get started somewhere and then they, they grow into that. Um, and I would say the third is... To say kindness is a little cheeky, but I really think it's kindness and... You know, I have said before, I don't know if it's because of our criteria where it's not just sales, right? Yeah. But it looks at leadership and it looks at um, uh, industry involvement and community that we attract a really great person. Yeah. And I think success in this business, um, being kind, um, taking time to help a younger agent, listen to someone new, share what you've you know experienced uh, is something also that they all share in common. Yeah, and I would say that it well, one, I say it it is a lot to do with agents in your community. Yeah. Okay. Whereas some of the other awards, I would two things. One, I would say on the surface they would not be as kind. However, one of the things I've noticed is some of those agents are in your community as well, and that kind of bleeds over to others. Yeah. You know. Um, and it's kind of like, I've been going to, you know, conferences for 15 years, uh, all over the, the nation. And I've always felt, you know, you don't have to worry about someone in another market. Right. But, but w- as a result of what, what I've seen through your community, you're having that same kind of mentality that you had that I have going to a conference with a bunch of agents, but also in Austin locally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is, um, you know, kindness. I, I always say this, like. Don't mistake kindness for weakness. Yeah. And and I like I I mean that, right? So <clears throat> I think sometimes newer agents uh you know feel like to have a seat at the table to get the best for their client, to get their offer accepted than others, you know, kind of taking that hard ass approach is needed. Yeah. Right? 
but it's it's not as I've seen time and time again and heard from agents talking about hey like the simple things of returning a call yeah right and hey a top agent saying I don't like texting to the other agents I want to call them and hear what they have to say yeah and like it's that like human to human contact and touch and kindness that I think is undervalued yeah um, from so many agents, that's something that I've just witnessed as a huge component of, of success. Yeah. And, and a good friend of mine says you have to educate to attract, yeah. right? And that's really why I do what I do yeah. with, with, you know, this, this podcast and the trainings that I do, um, is that, you know, give to the, you know, you give to the community, it's like the Godfather type thing. You just give to the community and yeah. he, would, he would get back. Right. Um, also to that point, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Right. So like you want to be the best. Well, be swimming. Yeah. Be in company of the best and observe and learn and ask and listen. Uh, and so I think that's something also that Platinum Top 50 kind of is able to do uh, in, in bringing together folks is, you know, everyone kind of leaves a little bit sharper. Yeah. You are the average of the five people you hang around the most. <laughs> um, let's see. I think I already asked this. Tell me about how you work with the vendors that you choose for, for people that may not know. Yeah. So, you know, Platinum Top 50 is also unique in that we are underwritten through our partners. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of this like triangular type um, relationships where uh, our partners, whether it's a corporate partner in that lender, builder, title company category, or it's a small business partner, painter, mover, inspector, stager, right? Though those are our customers. Yeah. They underwrite what we do for the agents. They allow us to put on the education events, the social events that we do. So it's kind of this, you know, three-way uh, relationship where they allow us to do what we do for the agents. And in return, right, we ask and hope that the agents will open up opportunity to get to know these vendors, right? Yep. And and consider them as trusted referral partners. And at least just open up the opportunity for for space, right? Yeah. To, to hear them and meet with them. So the vendors are a huge part of, of what we do. And it's not just to underwrite. Yeah. They are critical in an agent's success. Yeah. Right? So again, like a message for a younger agent, if you will. Every, you should have a Rolodex yeah. of a plumber, a roofer, a landscaper, yeah. a painter. Like these are relationships that when your listing needs something at the last minute or your client needs something, when you're able to deliver that high quality service provider or high quality staging or photography, whatever it may be, that's a part of your service yeah. that you're giving to them. There's value in that. Yeah. And so it's not like, oh, I don't have time for to get to know a foundation repair. If you don't know someone in foundation repair, you should. Yeah, right. Right? And 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 because that way instead of it being forty thousand, you know the guy who's solid, whose family's owned it for 15 years, who can get it done for 25. Yeah. That's value to your customers. So we take a lot of pride in, I take a lot of pride in the top quality representation mm -hmm. of real estate agents that make up Platinum Top 50 from all different brokerages yeah. of all different sizes. Yeah. I take that same pride in the representation we have of our business partners, Yeah. Um, their commitment to serving agents, they all come by referral, you know, agents, I'm by referral. Well, so are these, yeah, right? right? And nine out of 10 times, it's an agent like you saying, hey, you should really talk to my painter, yeah. my landscaper, right? Yeah. They would they would be a great fit. And that's how we kind of vet them or or get introduced. Yeah, I actually have a meeting with one of your, your vendors on Friday. I know, thank you. Yeah. And he's so excited about that. Oh, and, cool. and like when I say like transformational, right? Like yeah. I mentioned, I'm from a small business, yeah. right? My dad's a, a home inspector. Um, I know who you're talking about. His company is a family business, right? Yeah. Like we brought y'all together to make a meaningful connection. Yeah. You're getting to know him. And you know what? He is going to be so loyal and committed to serving your customers. Yeah. And guess what? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does, what do you have to lose? And, and, and I wouldn't look, I, I'm a big believer in not wasting time. Like we, yeah. we, we were going to go to lunch. It's like, dude, I go to lunch twice a year. Yeah. Uh, let's do a zoom. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, I, totally. but I wouldn't do that if I, I wouldn't even go and meet this guy. If I didn't first, I didn't have the recommendation yeah. of you and your community and look at the business and say, okay, is this someone can I can recommend to my agents? Yeah. So, you know, there, there's, there's validity in, and, and how you choose your people right. and, 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 you know, the vet that are vetted and all that. Well, let me say this too, is because I was, I entered into this 
from the perspective of a small business partner, yeah. right? I know the challenges of what it's like to get in front of the top agents and, yeah. and try to build these relationships organically one at a time. We also, I also kind of help coach our partners. Yeah. So I'll have webinars at the start of the year, giving them advice sure. on, hey, making sure, right? I, uh, some of the tips I give, right? Don't try to hit up all 175 finalists. Right. Go through our list and narrow that down. Yeah. And then really just target and hone in on those 45 people yeah. a year long. Make sure that you have a follow-up in place. You come to an event, you better show up early. This is my advice, right? Yeah. Um, don't try to be everything to everyone. Yep. You leave with a handful of meaningful connections. Now have in place, hopefully it's some sort of like, you know, automated or process-based follow-up so you can stay in front of them yeah. because they're busy. Don't yep. expect them to remember or take the first meeting. So I think because not only have I been in that role, but I have a very, I mean, our partners renew year after year. Sometimes it takes like this one, two or three years to gain some traction. Yeah. But I have seen firsthand how it can impact someone's business. Yeah. And I love that. Like for small business, like that's the, that's the heart of like any community, any economy. Like, yeah. so bringing these people together for, for actual like results is, is just, that's the work that we're here to do. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. I got two more questions here for you. Um, knowing what you know now after doing this for all this time and seeing agents from, you know, the maturity of agents, the, you know, um, progression of agents, what advice would you give to agents that are aspiring to be on the platinum top 50 list? Yeah. Um, you know, advice that I would give is like we already said, you're the sum of the five people you keep, yeah. right? Um, mentorship, investment into themselves as a business owner mm -hmm. is one of those lessons. I think that those of us that are, you know, 15 years in yeah. maybe wish that we had done years ago, mm -hmm. right? Investment into leadership training, conferences, learning, like yeah. stay hungry for knowledge, invest in yourself. The ideal of any business is to grow a business so you can sell it. Right. So yeah. like go into this with how do I run this as a business? How do I create processes and systems? And look, that is not my specialty or forte. I have spent a ton of money in the last couple of years trying to rewrite what I didn't do in the beginning. Yeah. So advice is to surround themselves with positive, successful people. Yep. Right. Listen, do a lot of listening. Yeah. Those that are willing to share with you, ask them. Yeah. Right. And, and listen. Um, and then from there, invest in themselves. Yeah. Uh, because I think that's something I wish that I had thought to do M myself and my business, like yeah. reinvest into your business, into technologies, into mm -hmm. softwares. Yeah. Um, that's how you create like longevity. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been a conference junkie for 15 years and I've gotten so much out of that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, finally what's next for the platinum top 50? You know, <clears throat> there doesn't necessarily yeah. need to be yeah. anything next. Let me yeah. just tell you, sometimes keep doing consistency is key. Literally, I think the pandemic really changed that for for the better. So a couple of things, right? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I have three kids. When I started Platinum Top 50, it was out of the, in, in Austin. It was out of the back of my Honda Accord. Literally, we've <laughs> never had an office here. Yeah. We've never had someone who works Austin for us, right? We've managed this all uh, from, from a San Antonio home base. Uh, with three kids in this precious time yeah. that we have that, they're not going to be this age, you know, right now I'm at nine, eight, nine, eight, nine and 11. Gosh. Um, I always wanted to go to Houston or Dallas, yeah. right? Cause my clients would say, Hey, we have a branch in, in Houston. We've got headquarters in Dallas. When are you going to bring this there? And so it was always trying to chase that as like the next thing. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit. And I think we all kind of realized this hamster wheel maybe that we were on. Uh, at least I did. And I had this epiphany at kind of a leadership retreat that just because I can doesn't mean I have to. Yeah. And I don't know who I was trying to prove it to. Yeah. Whether it was myself or something that happened in my childhood. Yeah. But it was just because I know that I can do Dallas or I know that I can do it doesn't mean I have to. Yeah. And guess what? Right in front of me between Austin and San Antonio, Luxury League, yeah. Award-winning agents, you know, another brand that I introduced two years ago. Yeah. I have enough on my plate to keep me busy. And also not, not any one of these things is perfectly executed right yeah. now. Why am I looking for the next? 
So it's really just been the last two years have been, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to pull back on that. Yeah. I'm really going to look at how do I refine what I have for more automation, yeah. for more efficiency. Mm -hmm. So I'm now channeling my desires for growth, yeah. right? Not to be externally into other markets, yeah. but I want to grow internally in how we operate. Mm -hmm. And that's challenge enough for me that keeps me wanting to like wake up and go to the office. So yeah, a, a mentor of mine said, and this really stuck with me is instead of asking what else I can do, ask what more I can do of what I what is already working. Absolutely. You know, how can you refine the processes that you have in place that are working? How can you make these processes do more with less? Right, right. You know, right. and I think that's really powerful. And and also for me, Houston and Dallas will always be there. Yeah. Right. This like age I have with my kids right now won't. So I'm in a really good work life balance where I'm not, yeah. I'm not heading myself into burnout. Yep. Right. Where then I'm going to hate it. And also guess what? To go to Dallas or Houston, I better have the most rock solid operations. Yeah. Right. Existing that can transfer there that I don't have. Yeah. So I, instead of just looking ahead ahead, it just makes sense to like refine what I have now for all the right reasons, timing being one of them. Yeah. And also just, uh, that's the smart business, you okay. know, mentality, yeah. uh, is to get this house in order before I kind of start looking at the others. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we're going to have in the description box below this video links to your website, links to other resources and a playlist of very similar, uh, podcasts, but where can people find you? Yeah. So, I mean, our website, right? PT50. So we call it Platinum Top 50. That's a mouthful. Uh, so PT50.com uh, is our website. Of course, we're on Instagram and Facebook, yep. uh, the usual. So there you go. Awesome. Google. If you Google it, there it will go. come up. Uh, <laughs> it's like the easy, the easy answer to that <laughs> yeah. one. Well, thanks for being on our podcast. Hey, always a pleasure, Ryan. And you know, again, like relationships like this are ones that I value yeah. that make work enjoyable. Uh, doing new things like this is fun. So I appreciate the opportunity and, you know, congratulations on your success. Thank you. Watching you transition from agent to broker to big broker uh, <laughs> is is something that's really fun. And I'm glad that you haven't gotten too big for your britches. Uh, <laughs> and still have time to come and be a part of Platinum Top 50. And we always value uh, what you bring to the table. Thank you. Awesome.